Honourable and respected brothers and elders, there is absolutely no rule which Allah has sent down which is not beneficial for mankind because Allah knew what we needed, isn't it? He's Rabb, He knew exactly what was needed for Insan. I know sometimes there are some rules which we, we can't get our head around. It may not make sense to us, but because Alhamdulillah we have this vision, this view, this opinion that Allah Ta'ala is Alim and Hakim. And if, it, if we can't understand the hikmah and the rationale behind something, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong in the hukum and the command. Rather, it's something deficient within ourselves. So my belief as a Muslim, I believe that Allah hasn't sent down anything which is illogical. That's my belief. Anything which is illogical, I don't believe that. I believe every single thing which Allah had sent down via the Prophet, to the Prophet وسلم, to instruct us, to teach us, to educate us is of our benefit. Allah Ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum wa asa an tuhibbu shay'an wa huwa sharrun lakum It's possible that there's, there's something that you dislike, something that you don't like but however that thing is beneficial for you and there is something which you like, something which you love however that thing is harmful for you Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun Allah Ta'ala to instruct us, to advise us, to inform us tells us Allah knows you don't know meaning your knowledge is limited your Allah's knowledge is infinite so sometimes because what happens is why we get into this debate because people want to know what's the hikmah behind this what's the reason I want to know the wisdom behind it first and why is it a problem many Muslims say well until I don't know the hikmah I, I'm not going to practice upon it until I don't know the reason go okay I'm not going to practice and we've come across this being Imams we've had people when we tell people this is the law hukum of Allah um, but it doesn't make sense. Rationally to me it doesn't make sense is the jawab which we get. We say, brother, look, I have not got the ilm which Allah has got. I can only tell you what Allah had said and the, what the Prophet wasallam said. That's all I can do. If you accept, fabiha wa na'imat. Excellent. Good on you. Kudos to you. But if you don't, then this bit, lakum deenukum waliyadeen. But as a Muslim, anything which Allah Ta'ala has said we do, we do. So in that essence, deen basically as uh, it can be summed up in two ways. Is to do all the do's and abstain from all of the don'ts. Jo kaam karna hai, karo. Or jin cheeza se bachna hai, bacho. Ye deen ka khulasa hai. Khulasa samjho. One of the things which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made impermissible is gambling. Gambling. Now you may be thinking, Gambling, obviously when we think of gambling, we think of very high-end scale casinos or very, very, for example now, deep debt and, and, and the likes. Whereas obviously which we'll mention that it doesn't limit it just to what we generally understand it to be. Anyway, let me just mention this. In, t in terms of history, right, in the time of Jahiliyyah, this was a very big thing. It was a pastime. The Arabs of the Jahiliyyah, the pre arabian in, in the, the time of the Prophet ﷺ and before, they were very heavily involved in gambling a lot. It was very common. And that is why the prohibition came in stages. The prohibition came in stages. They didn't outrightly come out. It didn't, Allah Ta'ala didn't say outrightly, just stop. It came in a couple of stages. But however, Allah Ta'ala sent down a verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 90 and 91, wherein al absolutely became impermissible, both alcohol, alcohol as well as gambling. Why is it an issue? Why do we have to talk about this today? Is because surprisingly, 70% of UK adults, 70, that's 32 million people, are taking place weekly in the national lottery. And people don't think of that as gambling. Whereas for a Muslim, this is a problem because it is ultimately gambling. Because first of all, I'll, I'll mention in a second, inshallah, the definition of gambling and so on. But because I've mentioned Surah Al-Ma'idah, let me just mention that verse. Just so you know, I'm not coming from myself. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, innama al-khamru wal-maysiru wal-ansabu wal-azlamu rijusum min amal shaytan fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. He says that, O oh believers, so he's addressing the believers. So I'm, my, my, I'm addressing here the believers as well. I'm talking to my fellow Muslim brothers. And if someone chooses not to practice, Baisab, that's your deen, that's between you and Allah. I'm not here to force anybody, we can't force anybody. We can only put forward what is the correct opinion. Allah Ta'ala mentions, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْزٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ what does he say that 
alcohol, khamr is intoxicants. When we think of intoxicant, it's not just alcohol. Al khamru ma khamr al aql. Anything which can intoxicate the mind is an intoxicant. So you got your weed there, you got your crack and heroin and all these other things. People say, show me from the Quran where it says weed is haram. Show me the ayat of Quran. Why it mentions khamr as haram? So based on that, Umar radiallahu anhu, if you look in the tafsir, he mentions al khamru ma khamr al aql. The, in Quran, they mention usul. But can you, sh can you show me physically how to pray from Quran? I I'll sit here, one million pound in arm, if you can show me every single rukun in salah. You can't. It mentions in Quran, aqeemu salah. Just pray salah. It mentions, wa'atu wa zakah, give zakah. How? Kutiba alaykum musiyam. How do you fast? From when until when? Okay, the timing has been mentioned. But what things break fast? How, what things you have to give zakat? This is why we need the hadith. Our deen is complete with both things. So when we look into the tafsir and we look, that Umar radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that khamr is something which distorts the faculty of thinking. It, meant, it destroys that and ruins it. So khamr is one thing. Maysid, which is referred to as gambling. Okay, gambling as, a, as, a, as, as all types. Then, Ansab and Azlam. Basically, I haven't got time to go into these last two. Basically, what they used to do in the time of Jahiliyyah, people used to, they used to slaughter animals in front of altars, in front of idols. Tabarruk. So they'd get an animal, slaughter it in front of an idol and say, this is Barakah. And then Azlam, they used to do like drawing lots of arrows. But like I said, this is, I don't want to go into these two things because then that will digress. The thing I'm focusing on is Khamr here, and Amasid rather. But Allah Ta'ala mentions in verse number 91, Inna ma yuridu an wal bagda fil khamri wal maysir, wa yasuddakum an dhikrillah wa an salah Fahal antum muntahun. Allah Ta'ala mentions what shaitan wants to do by means of khamr and, and gambling, maysir, is what? An yuqi'a baynakum al adawa. He wants to cause enmity between you. And what he wants to do, وَيَصُدَّكُمْ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ He wants to stop you from the remembrance of Allah. He wants to stop you from salah. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ Will you, will you not take heed? Will you then you not stop? So Allah Ta'ala then in this verse, ulama mentioned this, the verse number 90 was the prohibition. فَجَدَّنِبُهُ Abstain from it so you can become successful. So in that is alcohol and so on. Like I said, some people think they have this thing that if I just buy the odd scratch card, you know, I go down the shop and I buy a scratch card for a pound or I do the national lottery. That's not really gambling. It's a game of chance. Then I ask that person a question. What, what, define what gambling is. Define what the word gambling means. Okay, I understand the word mesid. If, if you look up a traditional Arabic dictionary, it will show you mesid was a game of chance, which basically they used to do with arrows. That we understand. However, what it is, is that... Then, like I said, whenever we're obscure, we're not sure of something, then we go towards the hadith, we go towards the aqwal of sahaba. Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah bin Umar, these two senior sahaba, they said, Al-Maysir huwa al-Qimar. Al-Maysir huwa qimar So basically, Maysir, in essence, what is mentioned in Quran is all types of gambling. So whether you're buying a scratch card, whether you're doing the national lottery, whether you're going to some mai, which has got like, so you know, in, I, I had this, I, I, and I, feel, I hate to say this, but I was in Pakistan, this is where I come across this. You have people that were selling, they were doing like inam, like a, they were, you, you pay it, you do an inam and you scratch a thing and see if you've won. That's also a type of gambling. It's a lower scale, but it's still a type of gambling. Then you've got the casinos and the slot machines and the fixed odd betting terminals, Nozibillah, and all these different types. It starts from here and it goes to there. All of them are impermissible. Why? Because what is the definition of gambling? Define gambling. So gambling is an activity or a practice at playing a game with chance. With a chance to win money or some stakes. This is a game of chance. So there's a possibility of you losing that as well. Okay, so you are taking a risk to win money or to win some stakes. That, in essence, is gambling. Whether you, now, when you look at that on a low scale, I'm buying a lottery ticket. I'm only paying, I don't know how much it is, I'm sh a pound or two if, if, I, if I think. You buy a card, you think to yourself, well, it's only a pound. But however, it's still the definition of gambling. And it's kind of funny because, you know, subhanAllah, uh, the industry is not designed to benefit anybody but the industry. Let me tell you that very clearly. The industry is not designed to benefit anybody except the industry. Did you know, subhanAllah, last year, last year, the takings of gambling in UK were 14.4 billion pounds. Where, that's a lot of money. 
14.4 billion. I don't want to mention too much. The highest paid CEO was of a gambling company. The highest paid CEO. And there, I don't want to start mentioning the figures because Nauzibillah, you know, we are so weak. If we start talking about the money, we'll say, by, well, forget this, let's explore other avenues. Shaitan will come to us. So if, I'm very careful not to mention the name, not to mention the company, not to mention the amount. Just to say that naturally there's money involved. 14.4 billion ain't a joke. Do you understand? There's a lot of money to be earned. Nevertheless, what it is, is that some people think that if I'm giving a pound, I'm buying a lottery ticket, there's a chance to win. Did you actually know mathematically what your chance of winning is? It's one in 45 million chance of you actually winning. So those hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, 32 million people in UK, they take part in this regularly. 70% of adult population in UK. Now they're taking part in this thing to this hope that they're going to win this jackpot. When they show you the uparuparsi, the muti muti, just the winners, people think, I need a bit of that. that. I need that. And for that, I'm going to invest every week a few pounds, just the possibility that I may become a winner one day. However, the truth of the matter is, there's a 1 in 45 million chance that you're actually going to win that. So they don't show you the losers, they only show you the winners. And it's that which everyone bases their nazar upon. Oh, that's, it's worth the risk. It's, you know, and then this is how we, shaitan comes. But Allah is great. A couple of pounds here and there, Allah doesn't become any less great. Bruv, there's no space for your mantik in the deen. If Allah says don't do something, don't do it. There's going to be harms behind that. And I'll mention some inshallah in a second. But the reason why Allah Ta'ala prohibited this in the time of Jahiliyyah is because na'uzu billah, right? The word maysid comes from the word yusr. yusr. Those brothers who speak Arabic will tell you it means easy. Okay? Another his definition, sahlul inqiyad. Easy to make something a submission. Allah remgari, Allah forgive. In the olden days, what used to happen was if someone defaulted by way of payment and they couldn't pay it, they would enslave their children, they would take their belongings, and they would also, na'uzubillah, also enslave their wives as well. They would, na'uzubillah, they would have, may Allah forgive me for saying this, they would have sexual relations with the wife of that person. Like, you can't pay the money, I'm going to take it out on her. Zulum! Zulum! What drives people to do that? Because you owe me money. I want my money. Allah Ta'ala said, no, remove this from society. If this is what it can create, remove it. And let's not think this is just pre-Arabian times. What's happened in UK? How many people have lost their homes and so on? There's a number and number of things in which I'll, I'll come to a second inshallah in a minute. One of the other reasons why it's haram, the zulm involved, what is the ideal of Islam? The ideal is innam al mu'minuna ikhwa. That is the ideal. We're supposed to treat each other like brothers. So if, not that it would happen, but if someone is involved with another person, it could happen. I was going to use myself as the example, na'uz billah. But alhamdulillah, may Allah keep us safe from this sharr and fitna. But if someone was involved with another person and they were involved in a gamble and involved in a, in a, in a, in a, in a game of chance, one of them is going to be the winner, one of them is going to be the loser. This is why Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, right? Yes, alunaka anil khamri wal maysir qul fihima ithmun kabir wa manafi'u li nas wa ithmuhuma akbaru min nafi'ihima. The people are asking about khamar and so on, alcohol and gambling. Allah Ta'ala mentions qul fihima ithmun kabir. There's a big sin in it, but there is some benefit. Because uh, undoubtedly, by sub, isn't there some benefit? If naturally, if me. I'm saying me and you again, Nahuzbillah. I want to kind of just exclude myself because I, may Allah save us. But if somebody was involved in a debt with gamble with yourself, one of you is going to be the winner, one of you is going to be the loser. So rationally, there is some benefit, but it's a one-sided benefit. Mu'min believers are supposed to be like what? Innam al mu'minuna ikhwa. Allah mentions your brother for aslihu bayna akhawaykum. You're supposed to make islah. You're supposed to rectify one another. When you when you see your fellow Muslim brother doing something wrong, you give nasiha. You give akhlaq, you try and give him targheeb, you try and help him. That's akhuwa. It doesn't matter, like me, I'm half English, half Pakistani, I'm mixed race. Someone here from Bangladesh, someone from Syria, someone from Pakistan, someone from Morocco, someone from Jazair, it doesn't matter. Ikhwa, these are all brothers, alhamdulillah. That is the beauty of saying la ilaha illallah. That's the mindset we need to bring. But when you do gambling, na'uzibillah, what happens is someone's a winner, someone's a loser. You got, that feeling goes out the window. Akhuwa breaks, aduwa, enmity starts. You see, this is why we say that Allah Ta'ala knew, we may say, well, there's wisdom in gambling. You can earn money in gambling. Man, if I take myself to, so I can earn money. 
Some people can and do earn money. We're not doubting that. But the gambling industry last year didn't earn 14 billion for nothing. Where's that money coming from? If they were paying out as much as they were earning, there would be no industry. So we are, we, are the, we are the fools to go there and put money in these fat cat's pockets with the high hopes that I'm going to one day win the lottery. You're not winning nothing, my brother. One in 45 million chance. And even if you did, and you inherit the jackpot, the euro jackpot of millions, can you even spend even one cent of that money? You can't. It's haram money now. Only good for one thing, sadaqa, without even the intention and the niya of, of, of thawab. Only one thing. You better ask mashayikh and ask ulama. We are just uh, khatibs and, and advisors. But nevertheless, let's go further, inshallah, because I've got a few minutes. I want to touch something else in addition to that. Because like I said, some people can say, okay, in the time of Jahiliyyah, two people used to have a gamble. Well, now I'm gambling against a machine, a casino. So it's not the same anymore. Okay, let's use that logic for one minute. Fair enough. Okay, you've got that thing to say that I'm not gambling against a person. However, is it still free from harm? Is it? Well, I'm sorry to say, but it's not. If you look at the Royal College of Psychiatrists, they actually released the report. They said that problem gamblers, that as a result of gambling, problem gamblers, people who actually have taken it beyond the thing of recreation, beyond the level of fun, now it's time to take over your life. They develop anxiety, poor appetite, poor sleep, stress, depression, low self-esteem, and a lot of other things. When this kicks in, especially low self-esteem, that is why the tendency to drugs comes in. A person doesn't, doesn't pick up a, a brown and start injecting their veins straight away, or just do a line of coke for the sake of it. A, someone feels low within themselves, and they think, this is my way of escaping this current feeling which I'm feeling. But do you understand where I'm coming from? Sorry, this may sound a bit philosophical. When someone feels at their rock bottom, that's why they take drugs, because they just want to get out of that frame of mind. And they will do anything, whether it's filling their veins with drugs or taking a line or a hit, whatever. They just want to get out of that frame of mind. Low self-esteem brought that person down. By you taking drugs, you're pushing yourself even further. You're just masking the problem. That's like having a cancer and just putting a plaster on the top and saying, Allah, Allah, khair, Salah, it's all right. No, take the plaster off, clean the wound, get some anesthetic on that. Is it called anesthetic? Wallahu alam, the stuff that cleans the germs up. Fix up the wound and repair it. Take it, tackle it out of the root. Anyway, so a person feels this low self esteem, depression, they then take recourse to what? Drugs, alcohol, dependency on other sort of uh, stimulants and other sort of uh, things to kind of control that feeling of of that anxiety and depression and that low self-esteem. And they also say there is a direct link between gambling addiction, those people who have got themselves into debt, and also suicide as well. And there have been reports, and we don't need to go into two minutes at this stage because time does not permit. All I'm trying to say, I'm trying to dispel this notion that because in the olden days, our gambling used to take place on one-on-one. -on -one. So that makes sense, that I can't gamble with a fellow person. But then someone may say, bravo, well, if I take myself to Vegas, I'm gambling against the, the big casinos on the strip. So why should that be haram? It's not a person now, now it's a corporation. But have rahm on yourself. You yourself are going to become ill. You yourself are going to be affected. There's also that issue as well. Have mercy on yourself. And this is how it starts. Nobody becomes a compulsive gambler overnight. Nobody. It starts off with, a, like, they call it a bit of fun. Like for example, subhanAllah, right? We used to, as kids, go to the fairgrounds, right? And obviously, look, we play a few arcades, you get me? Arcades by computer games, sensible ones as well. However, you've got those 10p machines. I don't know if you guys have seen them. They're moving and there's, con there's coins on there. And you think to yourself, if I can just get a 10p there, it's going to push all these coins down. Doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And Allah forbid, I've seen people sit there, take pound upon pound, 10p, 10p, 10 it just, without you knowing, within 10 minutes, you've blasted 10, 20 quid. You'll get a few quid back, but you're putting more than what you get. And that's the problem with some of these machines. It's not designed to make you the winner. Let, take it out of your brain. Well, there's no, why do you think Trump and these people have got these big casinos? They're not paying out the winners. They know that there's an industry built on fools and they can suck these people dry. But we as Muslims, look, like I said, Islam is about choice. We're not going <clears> to, <throat> we can't force our opinion on nobody. As a Muslim, I need to think to myself, if Allah said it's haram, I don't understand the hikmah, but Allah is alim and hakim. Okay, 
I don't I, I dislike it, but inshallah I hope it's beneficial for me. That's a believer, that's a mu'min. But when a person starts thinking, well, uh, you see, because what it is, is that I can possibly win and them days it was against people. Brother, please, Allah give us, leave your logic to the side. There's also inherent problems which you're going to face as well. Let me just mention a couple more. You know, did you know that the NHS, right, they say because of gambling, problem gamblers we're talking about. And also, let me add that other thing. You know, I said to you that there's a problem, issue of problem gambling, anxiety, so, stress, all this stuff. The same report by the Royal Society of the Psychiatrists, guys, they said that the age group between 16 and 24, one in 20, one in 20, that's 5% of the population is a problem gambler. Between the age of 16 and 24, you shouldn't be addicted at that age. You know, you're flushing your life down the toilet, subhanAllah. And we see our Muslim brothers, and this is why it's a problem, because it's found amongst all communities. But have a guess what? It's found, funnily enough, I'm talking about bookies and other things. They're found more amongst those places where there is less money in comparison to other places, less fortunate areas. So one of the places where they found that gambling was a big problem, have a guess where? Bradford. Bradford? And you think it's over subhanAllah, like, you would think that if people haven't got money, they're not going to throw it away. But they're throwing it away on the chance that I may win. There might be a possibility. Now what happens is, as soon as you step into those bookies, right, those places where they're offering gambling, it first starts off as a joke, okay, I'm going to put a fiver on this, a tenner on this, oh, look at the odds on this fight, had I put a tenner, I could have got this much in return. That's what shaitan makes you think. But what happens is, there's an issue of dopamine release in the brain, and this is amazing. Allah mentions in the Quran, yes, alunuk anil khamri wal maysir. Allah mentions khamr and maysir together. Allah mentions innam al khamr wal maysir wal ansab wal aslam. He mentions khamr and maysir again. It mentions people who are addicts to gambling, people who get a buzz of gambling because you get a dopamine release. It's the same effect released in your brain like it would be released for drugs and alcohol. Subhanallah. Allah mentions alcohol, Allah mentioned gambling. Now we didn't understand why Allah mentioned it together, but this is one of the maybe possible hikmas and reasons. That the same buzz you're getting off that alcohol and drugs, you're going to get off gambling. So it is an intoxication. And when a person, right, when in, a game is going on, they're just glued to that screen. They want to know whether they're going to win or lose. And they, you know, their dopamine is being released, mind, emotions are going all over the place. But it doesn't always end in good news, I'm afraid. Because the NHS have said that it's costing them at the moment, just on problem gamblers, 1.2 billion pounds a year. Billion. Just on problem gamblers. And you think, subhanAllah, it was only just like... Laurie hasn't been around for that that long. You know, I think for, if I'm not mistaken, about 17 years if I'm not mistaken. I can correct that, obviously, if it's not. But like I said, the industry is designed not to make you a winner, it's to make them a winner. Because you know certain casinos and bookies, if you do start winning, have a guess what they do? They close your account, tell you to do one. Because there are some games which are built on a certain element of skill. I don't need to mention them, because God forbid, then again, shaitan comes again. Some games, I said, some, where there is an element of skill, to an extent. But when you're on, a, for example, now a fixed odd betting terminal, and you're chucking £100 every potentially every 20 seconds, right? And that's how vicious it is. You can place a £100 bet every 20 seconds. That means in one hour, there have been people noted of spending £18,000 an hour on fixed odd betting terminals. £20, £20, £50. They're just feeding the machine with £50. I was watching this thing, and by Allah... I, I was just thinking, the, and this is how sad it is. They're, they're recording the guy. They're recording the guy spending the, he spent two and a half grand in it within minutes. I would have gone up there and I said, bruv, what are you doing? Put the money in your pocket. What are you doing? If I happen to be there. How, he wasn't a Muslim. That's irrespective, man. He's a fellow human being, isn't he? He's throwing his life down the drain. Two and a half grand within a couple of minutes. Subhanallah. And the people aren't stopping him. They're just, I'm going to upload it because this will get likes on my Facebook. This is going to get likes on my Instagram. So to the hell with him, screw him. So long as I can get some likes on my Facebook, well, everything's all right. What a sick society, honestly, we're becoming. Really, Allahu Akbar. So this bayan is not just, I'm, not, I'm talking to Muslims, but this is not just for Muslims. I feel sympathetic towards society. Why haven't the government intervened? Why not? Alhamdulillah, some akal has come that they're saying we're now going to put a cap on some of these fixed odd betting terminals. We're going to cap it to £2.50, I think it was, uh, as the maximum. 
Nevertheless, at this moment still, someone can spend 18,000 pounds on these, on these fixed odd bidding terminals. And unfortunately, our Muslims are also involved. So it starts off small, a little joke, you know, putting a patena here, 20 quid there, buying the odd card, but then dopamine starts kicking in, and then you get a buzz, and once that buzz comes, then you start going to other things. And compulsive gamblers, I'm just gonna finish, and I know I've gone a couple of minutes over. I wanna mention, I know one brother personally, personally, He's on, I can, I can, I've got to mention this very carefully. He's only in his 20s. 20s, okay? He currently is in debt a quarter of a million pounds. Quarter of a million. Because one fifth of the bets are taking place now online. So he's online. A lot of apps, a lot of this is happening online, okay? Because obviously, if you stand in front of a fruit machine, keep on chucking in pound after pound, people are going to say to you, bro, fix up. Can you fix up, please? Let's go, we've got things to do. Or come on, you know, you're spending all your money. And it's, it's, it's embarrassing that you're, you're, you're losing. But what happens is online, you're by yourself. You're in the comfort of your own home. That's why people, when they go online, they watch pornography, play gambling, because no one can see me. Allah, Allah is Ghafur Rahim. I'll make tawbah afterwards. But just as so long as other people can't see. So this is why, subhanAllah, one of the things, he was getting himself into addiction again and again by, he made a win, then made a loss. Made a win, made a loss. He won, he lost, he altogether, he won 1 million, lost 1.25 million. This is a young boy from a Muslim family in our families. I know another brother, he sat there with a wedge of notes, a wedge, and he was going in one of these machines. Within 90 minutes, he blew the whole lot. The whole lot. One guy who I know, subhanAllah, he got himself so in debt. And these are people, look, I, I'm not, this is not something I've Googled. These are people who I know of. One guy, astaghfirullah, he, one, a Muslim, these are Muslims. I'm, I'm not talking about non-Muslims, I'm talking about a Muslim brother here. And I, I do feel sympathetic to everyone, but this is specifically for my Muslim brothers, for me, for me saying this. This guy got in so much debt over cards and so on, he got himself into debt. He lost his house. He had a big goti man in Pakistan, a big one. He lost it. And then Nauzubillah, they took his wife as well. You can't pay your money, we'll take the money out on her. And they did as well. How can a Muslim do that to another Muslim? Forget a Muslim, how can a human do that to another human? So you see what happens is it starts off small and innocent. It seems innocent, but it's not innocent. It start, and this is why Allah mentioned, what is it? Shaitan wants to create enmity between you. This is why Allah, through his kindness, he mentions It's rigs, it's filthy, filth. Stay away from it. You know why? You will be successful. Allah said this to us. We should say, Alhamdulillah, Allah rescued us by telling us don't do something. Allah, may we look at all the ahkam of Allah in this way. Whatever Allah said, we do. Whatever He said we don't do, we abstain. Allah gave us tawfiq to implement and make amal. But this is a very serious topic, a very delicate topic as well. But if anyone's got a problem, go to Gamblers Anonymous or something. Go to someone who you can seek some help from. Speak to those local ulama who are a bit savvy, who know what's going on. Because some mashayikh, if you go to them and say, I've got gambling, they say, ah, khulud fin nar, astaghfirullah. You're going jahannam. So we don't want that as well. Go to those people who understand a bit as well about addictions and so on and have rahim on yourself and rahim on our communities and have rahim on the wider public as well, inshallah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi.